Hello, everybody. Today, I am sharing a conversation I had with a group of friends about the history and psychology of animals' relations to humans and how it ties into the furry fandom and also some of the misconceptions that people have about the fandom. This is kind of like something that's in the human psyche that's been around for a long time. You know, they have a big relationship with animals, a bigger relationship than people even realize, you know, from, you know, mm. the earliest of time and interactions with the environment around us. But why is that, though? That's what I'm curious about. We inherit a lot of things from from ancestral DNA. We may not be as integrated into a environment as our ancestors were, but we still have that DNA. You know, the hunter gatherer yeah, societies cold, you know. would would you know would deal with animals on a regular basis, hunting animals. Yeah. You know, being that's, around animals. That's called like innate knowledge. It's something that's literally programmed into your brain. Right. You know it from like since you were born basically and you have that then you have things like ancient egypt where um their <laughs> religion was started by an ancient zoo believe it or not they had an ancient zoo huh. and um they realized that there, there's something spiritual about animals and 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 you know from that from that they 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 basically started creating a religion on on their Interesting interactions with animals you know you have anubis you have and, and because human beings we need to explain how things are in our environment so we need to understand what's going on and so they would try to explain these things saying well the gods must have done it you know it's actually quite rational even though it might appear to be irrational you know there have been many fandoms throughout history and the Egyptians are a good example of this. So that's what bothers me when people say, oh, I invented the fandom or oh, I was one of these people that started it. I was like, mm -hmm. there's no way because there's always been this sort of thing. And there's probably always going to be this sort of thing. They actually had groups for people who did um, mascots, you know, they would have mascot groups. Yeah. You know, they'd have high schools, you know, high school mascots or this and that. And so, and so it's very, very vague. So to say that you were the guy and, and, you know, and, and it's just, it's also not very humble to say that either, you know, you gotta have, you gotta have humility when it comes to fursuiting and stuff like that. People get to, you know, get out of the daily grind and go back to your, a... your job, you know, something yeah. that will ease your mind. You know, you get to talk to people. It's very social. Why why not do something like those uh, masquerade balls? You know where you just put like a mask on and so then no one knows who you are. Why wouldn't you do that instead? Well, I mean that's That'd kind of what you're doing, super... isn't it? It's just something fun, they you know. Invent great. your own cre invent your own character. It's something that you know people like. I'm I, I'm known I'm known at, I'm known at work as JC, so I can get that anywhere. Yeah. yeah, JC's mom. And I accidentally went to Burger King one time, and the lady asked me my name, and I said it was Irix by accident. I was very disappointed in myself. Uh, I'll just say JC. I guess he's get JC. Look, my creativity yeah. is as comparable as a dad's stone. It doesn't exist. So, yeah, I'm not exactly oh. a creative person. So yeah, you don't have you don't have to be. You know, it's just. It... You know, it's just up to you. I mean, even even so, I mean, you may you might be more creative than you think you are. Yeah. So does that does that make more sense there? That, that little conversation. I thought about it quite a bit. It's just it's just it's just it's just I've always been confused every time. Yeah, and, and what what bothers me is is you got you got the normie culture saying, oh oh, look at these people. Are they interested in all this bad stuff? It's like no, that's there's a population of the fandom that's like that. True. There is, I and I even know some, but the thing yeah, is, most I know, aren't. I know, but that's in every group of people. There's, there's, there's those people. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Every every fan group, every interest. You know, there's probably a lot of crazy people in comic yeah. conventions. You know what I mean? That's. Oh, the Trekkies. Yeah, you know, Trekkies. Oh yeah. yeah. Do, do you know how much what bad is... stuff there is for Nintendo characters? I oh, mean, come tough. on. Oh, yeah. There's oh, so much. Oh, yeah. It's... yeah, I guess you're right when you think about it that way. I've also seen some really bad stuff with, like, anime and stuff. 
Well, I mean, I, I don't like to like, judge people here and stuff. I'll be friends with whoever as long as they're nice. And we stay over here and we don't mix. That's what we. That's what we believe. Man, should be. I don't know. There. No, well, we hold on. There are there are uh, kimono, and that's kind of a mix of furry and, like, and, and uh, anime. I don't like any of them. I've ah. never heard of them. Mm, yeah, kimono. I'll show you. I'll show you one of their avatars here. Here's kimono. It looks a bit chubby, a bit thick, mm-hmm. but like yeah, that. it's 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 kimono. I noticed like a lot of Japanese artists seem to do that. They make like their avatars really oversized. No, one thing is, I sport. really I like it. I think it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's nice and fluffy. I hope you enjoyed, and you have a wonderful day. Okay, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.